200 Years That Changed the World, a Gapminder video with Hans Rusling. It was the last 200 years that changed the world. I will show you in Gapminder world here the situation 1809. Each bubble is a country. The size show the population and the color show the continent. The brown here is West Europe and you can see from the map for the rest. This axis shows health, life expectancy at birth from 30 years to 80 years. And this axis shows income per person in dollar adjusted for inflation and for purchasing power. 200 years ago, all countries of the world had a life expectancy less than 40 years and had an income less than $3,000. Now I start the world. And you can see that the countries with good statistics, they are jumping up and down. There were famine years, there were better years. And West Europe and North America in industrialization started to grow the economy. But health didn't get much better. Eh? And slowly, slowly health was getting better. And when we came to a situation about 100 years ago, most of the countries of the world had not improved much. It was only this part of the world that was getting richer and eventually healthier and healthier. And between the First and the Second World War, you can see that the difference between the richest and the poorest in the world is just increasing. It was after the Second World War that most of the countries started to change. The green Arab countries here get richer and richer. China here is getting healthier and healthier. And now economic growth starts in China also. And the Arab countries, the green ones, they get uh, healthier. And here we are today. We have a continuous world from high income countries with long life expectancy to low income countries with very low life expectancy. But all countries of the world today has more than or are estimated to have more than 40 years of life expectancy. And all does not have more than $3,000 per capita. So it means that the world has become healthier and richer, but the difference still is enormous between the richest country and the poorest country. And there are also very big differences within countries, which we cannot show here. But to show how the change came about in a different way, I would like to compare two countries here. I will go back to, to uh, 200 years ago here. 1809, and I would like to compare the United States with China. Look, 200 years ago, the economy was growing in the United States, whereas it was declining in China. That was dominated by foreign powers. Then health started to improve in the United States, but nothing happened in China. And in fact, it was not until modern China emerged here, 1950, that China really started to improve. That was, of course, the great leap forward. That was what Mao Zedong called it. In fact, it meant a leap downwards. But eventually China got a better health and then started with a fast economic growth and is catching up with the United States. And today, the world looks like this. Some call it a flat world. It's not really flat. But what's meant with that expression is that the middle-income countries here, also called emerging economy, they have now a relatively good health, basic education for all, and some have very good education, are very capable, and they can compete with the high-income country in a completely new way, which we especially see now during the financial downturn. And, and uh, in 2009, the income will fall in most of the high-income countries. It will be a very tough period for the low-income countries. Perhaps those will be worst hit by the financial downturn, whereas the middle-income countries continue to have economic growth, and the gap between the richest and those in the middle, that will probably shrink quite fast during the next three years. Now, you can look at the details of each country in Gapminder World on our webpage.